All right, so today what we're gonna do is use Kling AI to create visual effects. And then we're gonna take that Kling AI video back into After Effects and add additional visual effects with the Video Copilot Saber plugin. All right, let's get into it. All right, so now we're gonna import an image into Kling AI, and then we're gonna copy this prompt into the prompt box. And the prompt reads, the camera slowly orbits round a woman as electrical pulses emit from her arm. Wrapped in intricate wires, the pulses radiate outward in rhythmic waves onto the building in front of her, casting flickering light across her surroundings. The energy travels along the wires, creating subtle ripples before dissipating into the air. I definitely created this prompt in chat GBT because ain't no way I'm writing something like this. But I figured, let me see if I could use chat GBT to add more detail to the prompt to see if Kling could understand all those additional details. So once I ran that prompt, I clicked on generate and boom, this is what Kling AI gave me. I don't think it's perfect, but the passive viewer is going to look at this and they're going to go, oh, that's cool. You know, I didn't know you could actually prompt for visual effects. So this case scenario is awesome because it added something that wasn't there. And I think this is great for visual effects or this is great for like storyboarding. All right, so now we're back in After Effects and what I'm gonna do is create a black solid and then I'm gonna add Saber to this black solid. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing a path over the first wire and I'm just going to do a rough pass over the, 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 this first wire. All right, cool. So once we have this first pass roughed and up, what we can do is go back and we can start softening up the edges by pressing alt on the point. And what that does is it just smooths out those points and creates bezier handles. So now we can go in there and start massaging those little points to make them curve to the wire. All right, cool. So we continue going through the After Effects timeline to see if we, we did a great job with that first frame. Then after that, what we're going to do is go up to the presets and click on electric. And then we're going to go down to the customized core option and click on the layer mask. So now that layer mask acts as a core for the electricity effect. All right. So then after that, we're going to add a keyframe to the beginning of the mask and we're going to add a keyframe to the ending of the mask. And we're going to continue to massage that mass so that we get a smooth transition from the first keyframe to the last keyframe. And we continue to do that just to refine that mask. And then after we get a nice refined mask, we're gonna go into the center of the layer, add another keyframe, and then refine that mask in that keyframe so that when we pre-render and we look at the whole animation, that mask should smoothly animate from one keyframe to the next keyframe. Now we can do this with Mocha AE and we can track the wire, but this shot is so short that we can just do this with keyframes. Now it's time to animate the electricity going from nothing to something. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate the end offset. We're going to bump it down to zero, and then we're going to set a keyframe in the beginning of the layer. 
we're going to add another keyframe to the end of the layer and then bring the end offset back up to 100%. And what this is going to do is going to give us an animation that animates the electricity on. So we get this nice pulse flowing through the wire. I'm going to speed up all of the other wires that are animated because it took way too long. Maybe I'll work on a longer tutorial for that or maybe I'll put that in a course. So then right after I feed up all that animation, I grabbed the keyframe from the end offset and I brought it up into the comp in order to speed up the electricity animating in. If I let the keyframe live at the very end of the comp, the electricity was gonna take too long to reveal on her arm. And then after that, what I did was I added a screen blend mode to the layer because the add blend mode that I had on the layer was a little too strong for this effect. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump up the wind speed to three, bump up the wind direction offset to negative 90, and then bump up the noise speed to three. If you check out both shots, one shot is a little bit subtle and it's nice movement, but I wanted more action and more oomph. We're gonna create mats for the wires that overlap the electrical pulse. It's gonna make it look more realistic. I started off at the end of the comp. Sometimes I started in the beginning, in the beginning. Yeah, in the. In the beginning, sometimes I start in the end, sometimes I, in, in the middle. It doesn't really matter just as long as you're starting at one opposite side. You don't want to start at a weird place in your comp because then you're going to have to compensate for those keyframes. We're going to start creating this mat on this wire right here. And we're going to start just building it out, making sure that we add points to this wire. There you go. And then I'm just gonna change the color of the mat in order to see it better. Because sometimes, you know, colors get in the way. So I made sure that this mask color is darker so I can see what I'm doing. So then I go there, I'm making sure that the mask is perfectly aligned with the contour of the mask. Then I went to the beginning of the comp and I set another keyframe. And then I started fixing the mask on that keyframe. So we get a nice transition from keyframe to keyframe. So here you go. I just keep on massaging those keyframes. Then I move to the middle of the comp and I create another keyframe and I start correcting the mask in this keyframe. There you go. Try to get as perfect as possible. There you go. That's perfect, 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 perfect. There you go. And this just check out those keyframes, make sure that everything works. Here you go. We're going to set another keyframe in between these two keyframes. We're going to set another keyframe in between the, the middle keyframe and the last keyframe and start correcting there. And you have to make sure that these keyframes are equidistant. You don't want them to be in odd places because that's what causes your mask to drift or causes your mask to kind of jitter so that you get a smoother transition in between keyframes. So now it's time to make the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F4 to reveal the mat settings. Then I'm going to pick whip to the Sabre 2 layer and then I'm going to invert it and then I'm going to press F. I'm going to go to the feather and bump it down to three. And then I'm going to bump down the mask expansion just so we could get a subtle light wrap over that wire. Then I'm going to go back to the layer, rename it to wire mat and change the color of the layer to green because most of my mats are green. All right. So now I'm going to speed up the process for the additional mats. This is the final shot. This looks great. We were able to create visual effects in Kling AI, bring it into After Effects, add additional visual effects with the Video Copilot Saber plugin and combine AI and motion graphics to create something cool. So I hope you guys learned something. On to the next one. Peace.